If I can lie to you once and you'll believe it. <laughs> Check in for tip 83 and find out the rest of the story. Welcome back to 101 Tips for Interviewing and Interrogation for Interviewers and Interrogators. This is tip number 83. I'm your host, Stan Walters. Let me finish my statement. If I lied to you once and you believe it, I could probably lie to you some more and you believe it. Now, where I heard that statement was in an interrogation from a long time ago where a subject was talking about his girlfriend. And he had lied to her about several other his escapades with other women, four, by the way. And he made the statement to the interrogator that if he lied to her once and believed it, he, he figured she could lie to her more and believe it. And I got to thinking about that. If I've seen it several times, I used it several years. And those of you who've been in my level two class, remember the video of Jerry and the story of the shooting. And you remember Jerry making that statement. Now I thought about that, you know, that really fits a lot with the interviewer. Now, number one, we have a, there's a, a process we call commitment. Go back and look at our uh, influence tactics, ethical persuasion tactics, it's several episodes back, and what about commitment? Once people make a commitment to something, like commit to marriage or public statement or get sworn into office or uh, make a commitment to, uh, you know, sworn to the military or to, or to a group or a, a swear allegiance or commit in writing in some form to a contract, people tend to stick to that. And the concept is that if once you make that commitment, it's seen as being a mature person, as adult, as, as wise, as smart, as to making commitment and sticking to the commitment. Here's the problem, ever. Now, we use that in an interrogator. You know, I'll say from the beginning to the subject, you know, it's in your best interest to be very honest with me. If you want, you want to help yourself, I understand that, you want to help yourself. So to be up yourself, you're going to be honest, I will be honest with you but it's only going to work if we're both honest. So we get the subject to commit to that. Now let's think about what Jerry said. First of all, one of the problems that interviewers, great uh, um, flaw in the interviewing process, is misdiagnose and deception and begin what's called confirmation bias. We make a commitment to ourselves, we believe the person is lying. Unfortunately, we made the assessment looking at wrong behaviors, looking at wrong symptoms of body language, such as the old myths about eye contact or fidgeting, arms and us, and so forth. We've talked about those, and go back and look at some episodes and we'll talk about that. But once the interviewer makes a commitment the person has to be lying, then everything they see from then on is deception. Sometimes we make a statement or commitment to that in our mind about another individual in our relationship or that we see in the public eye. You know, they have lied before, I believe they've lied once before, or I've made up my mind they have to be lying because I don't like them, and we stick to that commitment. We don't want to see anything else, any other evidence that disagrees with our initial commitment. So it's very hard to change that. Second problem, though, think about Jerry. Jerry said, if I lied to her once she believed it, I forget I lied to her some more she believed it. Think about what happens to the interviewer. If you get burned on one lie, and, uh, or, or you buy into the lie because you get burned on it, and you think, well, he, he's not possibly, he can't be lying. Then we've already made an unconscious commitment on our part that they have to be truthful. I recently did a, a video for a media outlet, did an analysis of an interrogation. And the, the media group was kind of split half and half on was the person telling the truth or was the person being deceptive. And it was kind of hard, you know, when I began to show them, here's the things that you're missing. And so we, once we commit that they have to be honest, we're going to get burned at everything that they lie to us because they figure they lie and they give us some more, like Jerry said. Or if I get caught and, and don't believe they would ever lie, then I become a ready-made victim. So here's what I propose to the interviewer. Remember that we're looking for clusters of behaviors, first thing. No single symptom means anything. But I'm also, I'm looking for grouping. Do they consistently keep showing problems at a target area? Very hard to disturb yourself as an investigator and interviewer is this. Make the evidence prove itself to you. Don't make up your mind and be open enough. Look at counter possibilities, counter theories. Okay, if I am wrong, where could I possibly be wrong? If I am right, where is the confirmation right? And look at both sides of your assessment. Challenge your assessment is worth the person's truthful or deceptive. Intellectual discipline. This is what makes you into the expert field, is looking at that. So, yeah, random things will show up, but now go back and look for verification, corroborating evidence, previous statements. Do they keep showing problems at specific points? So it means there's something wrong with that area. Or is, is there contradictions in what their statements are saying? 
or you see that, you know, I've, I've, I've made my commitment, I believe there's no way they can lie to me, then you're going to be a ready target. So I know it's a complex process and you got to think really hard and you got to really, really be disciplined. That's why in the narrative interview, we go through statements two or three times. We test it and evaluate it to two or three different methods, two or three different approaches or attacks. So if you keep seeing deception cues all the way through those three issues, fine. If you don't see them, then you start, your mind should start telling you, okay, what am I uh, missing that is the person's being honest? Is there something way that's caused a confirmation bias? or preconception on my part. So preconception can work. They're always gonna be tell the truth. Preconception always gonna be deceptive. Think about it. Go back and look at your t tapes, look at your interviews, and think about the point of letting the subject work and let the evidence work for you for the, for the proof. And look at counter possibilities and evaluate and tell yourself, could this be a truthful person that's afraid that nobody's gonna believe them? Or if I developed a preconception, they have to be lying. Great to be with you again. I want you to be safe. Be sure to share with me, please. I've got some great folks and friends that, that share on a regular basis, and I appreciate you doing that a lot. Hit the like button. Go back to my website, theliguy.com, and you can find a calendar of my events in there. And you can go back and check and see if there's open dates. There's also a place you can go take a look here at eSpeakers.com. eSpeakers.com, and you can take a look also at my calendar events and find where there's openings where I can prepare a custom design class this just for your personal with innovative interview and interrogation techniques and training. So give us a call and let's talk about that. We'll see you soon. Be safe and meet me back again for tip number 84.